Good morning, America, and welcome to this morning's huddle brought to you by Going On Offense. My name is Daryl Moon, and I'll be your host today. Thank you for being with us. We hope you will join the conversation. We're having, we have a wonderful guest panelist with us today to talk about addressing our feelings. We're holding these huddles every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday in an effort to be supportive to those who are struggling, to brainstorm strategies to help, to promote resources, and to engage collaboration. Now to introduce today's guest. It's my pleasure to introduce to you Stephanie Iliff. She's the founder of CEO and CEO of Powerhouse. She's a self-love coach, a podcast host, and a motivational speaker. I'm going to invite Stephanie to take four or five minutes to introduce herself and share a few comments about the topic today. But before I do, I want to invite all of you to participate. This will be a, a topic everyone has feelings. Everyone can share their thoughts. So please feel free to join us by raising your hand on your control box. and I'll turn on your microphone. Or if you just want to send in a question or a comment, do that as well. Stephanie, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, thank you so much for having me on. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, my name is Stephanie Iliff and I'm a self-love coach. I'm a single mama. I'm a podcast host and I'm a health fitness motivator. Um, before that, I was the vice president at a finance company. I worked in finance for 10 years. So quite the shift from going to numbers and finance to self-love and like all the woo and like all the excitement of that. Um, but I went on my own self-love journey. I went through a divorce and I found myself and I really truly found like my own passion and my purpose and what I truly was created for is what I believe. And it's just to help everybody really truly find self-love and self-worth and self-commitment and self-responsibility and just self-esteem and self-confidence. They all come together with self-love. And I truly love teaching people about that and helping them frame their mindset around that and helping them realize that you already are, you always have been, and you always will be so, so enough. And the powerhouse within you is already there. We just have to make sure that you can see the powerhouse that you are. And that's just by doing it brick by brick, by understanding what your mindset is. And like, is that the mindset you want? Just like there's a million ways to build a house. There's like a million different blueprints, right? Like there's a million different ways to live your life. And like my job is to help people build the powerhouse that they want to be by their blueprint and what works the best for them. And then when you do that and you actually are true to you, then you can love you. And then you have all this love to give. And then you're just like this huge ray of sunshine and all this light and love to give to the world. And that's like what makes it go round. And I love that video that you had before this, because it's truly, especially right now in the time that we're in, like, the more love and light that we can be in a world that can be so dark, it is so, so important. But that's, that stems from you understanding where your own light is from and like you understanding how to produce your light and how to give your light. And so I think that ties into understanding what your emotions truly are and like what you want to feel and how you feel and being able to, being able to voice that. Um, we live in a time where most of us were taught to not address our emotions. And we're seeing now over the last, I would say 15 years, like where emotional intel intelligence is becoming more and more a word that you hear and where people are like, oh, like, what does that really mean? Like, I wanna understand that. And so I think that that's a beautiful topic for today, especially some of the events that happened over the weekend, just like being able to tie in, like, where are you at feeling emotionally and how can we identify that and what can we do for you to help you? So thank you for putting this together and having me on. I think this is just so beautiful what you're doing and it's such a privilege and an honor. So thank you. Well, Stephanie, you obviously have a lot of passion, which just comes, it I just do. oozes from you. Where did you get this passion to build this, this powerhouse? organization where did it come from oh man passion like um it was from me finding what didn't make me passionate so it was almost like going from the opposite you know like um i absolutely love the company that i worked for and like i learned so much there and had so much mentorship and i got to work with some of the most amazing people that i'm so privileged for but i wasn't passionate about it like I loved the people and I loved it helping them, but I was never walking in like on a Monday morning with like my cup of coffee, like, oh my, this is gonna be the best day ever. <laughs> like I had to like make myself feel that way, you know, where today like I wake up and I'm just like, let's go world, like let's do it. And it's like, you literally find like your own passion, but I had to do things that I didn't want to do essentially to figure out what I did want to do. And that was part of my own self-love journey of like, I, I like, so for going back to, to my work, for an example, we'd hire new people all the time and we'd have like a, an onboarding meeting with them. Like, hi, I'm Stephanie, I'm going to be your VP. And then we was like, what do you like to do? And I hated when it got back to me because I was like, 
I don't know what I like to do. Like I, all I do is work and I'm a mom. Like, I don't know. And I'm like, I like to shop. Like that was always my answer. And I'm like, that is the lamest answer. Like I sound like who would want to hang out with me? Like, oh, I like to shop. And so like, I got to find out like what I truly like to do. And so it became this whole year of everything that scared me. I literally said yes to like, it was like that Jim Carrey movie, like the yes man. And, and so, and that, that got me into fitness. That got me into rock climbing. I jumped out of a plane. I walked on fire. I like, if anything, I was like, yes, well, yes, yes. Do it. And so it helped me like find what I truly love to do and what I was passionate about. And through that, that helped me actually start my company powerhouse. And um, so I think it's that it's like, you got to figure out what brings you joy. I call it your joy juice. Cause like your joy juice, like when you're doing it, you should just like, fill you up where you're like the Kool-Aid man. You're like, oh yeah, like let's go. And it's just like that you gotta find what gives that to you and then find a way that you can give that joy juice to everybody around you and you can make sure your joy juice is always staying full. And that's where your passion comes from, so. So I'm sure many of our attendees would love to hear, how do you coach people to find that passion? How do people find oh, that passion from within? What are some of the techniques that help people identify that for themselves? I love it. So I have people write down a joy list. I'm like, I'll literally say, well, what brings you joy? And I would invite everybody who's listening to right now, like, I would love for you to do this exercise. You can do it now or do it after, but I want you to really articulate like 15 things that actually bring you joy. And so often I find that when I'm doing this with people, they can only write down like five things. And it might be like, oh, being with family, like being with my kids, um, cooking a good meal, which is totally fine. But I want like, I want more, like, what really gets you you're like oh my god like i could get the whole world on this idea like i love mountain biking i love mountain climbing whatever it may be and it, maybe it is shopping for you but most people could only identify like five things and, I'm, and then i'll ask them like okay so when's the last time you did that and they'll be like oh i don't know and it just like breaks my heart so i'm like if you are not doing something every day that brings you joy you are not living a joyful life and you get to choose to do that so step one, I want you to figure out, okay, what are 15 things that truly bring me joy? And, I'll, and often these things that bring you joy are also just you realigning with who you are and actually keeping promises to yourself. So for an example of this, like just last week, one of my clients was like, what really brings me joy is when I go to the gym every day for five days in a row, she's like, by Friday, I feel like an, a completely different person. I believe in myself so much. I'm a better wife. I'm a better mom. I'm like happy the weekend I go into it, making better decisions. I'm, I'm active. I feel healthier. I have more energy. I'm like, perfect. Okay. So what stops you from doing that? And she's like, well, I don't, I don't know. I guess, I guess myself. I'm like, yeah, you're absolutely correct. So like, how can you keep a promise to yourself for five days? Cause what you really just identified was that when you say I'm going to do something and you follow through with it, your joy juice is turned on because you believe in you and you trust you. And that's so often what I find is that it's just keep making a commitment and then sticking through with it. Cause how often will you say like, oh, I, I would love to go on these hikes this summer, or I'd love to have these experiences or these memories but then it just is written down and nothing ever happens with it. And so in order for you to find the most joy is just to actually stick with something and stick the commitment to it, keep a promise to yourself and then go out and do it. And even if you didn't, if you're like, oh, I went, I went hiking and I actually hated it, but you stuck to what you said you're going to do, you're still gonna have the best experience because you were true to you. And so that's like part of your joy list. It's like, how, how much of this brings you joy? And then how can you make sure you actually do it? And so the practice is, trying to do one thing a day that brings you joy. And through that, it just becomes a domino effect. And then the other part of that is like, how can you bring others joy? So what I like to ask is like, what feelings do you love to feel? And most of us wanna feel seen, we wanna feel validated, we wanna feel heard, we wanna feel appreciated, and we wanna feel just like, like safe to be who we are, right? Mm -hmm. And so I figure out like, what are all those things that make you feel like that? And then how can you create a culture or kind of make this like soup of that where you can give that to everybody else around you? Because if you can do that, you're cultivating joy constantly, your joy juice constantly, and then you're giving more of that to the world. And that's what we're truly all here for is to like learn how to love ourselves and then learn how to love others and like share that. Like whatever you learn, go out and teach it. Don't just share your success. Like to yourself, don't keep it. Like if you figure out the best cookie recipe, 
y'all better share it with me because I'm a cookie freak and like I will share it with you and that's the same exact thing like I want you all to be able to taste the cookie and so when we find something that works for us like share that and the more you teach that the more joy you and like passion you actually create within you too because everybody else is getting on board for it you know it reminds okay. me of a comment that was made by a, a clinical uh, counselor early on in one of these huddles. He was talking about a study that was done where people tried to make themselves happy. And the study mm -hmm. found that those who tried to make themselves happy and only focused on themselves never truly made much progress in the happiness scale. But those who found happiness and shared it with others were able to find a much better success. Is that kind of what you find is it's not just about me, me, me but it's about being able to yeah. share with others. Oh, absolutely, 100%. And like, that's exactly what we want. Like, I think the other human, the thing that we all crave the most besides being seen is connection, right? Like yeah. just right now, like I feel like I feel energized because I'm connected to you. Like we're, we're connecting and we're helping bring connection, right? Every single person craves connection. Think about yeah. it when you, on your very first day of school, maybe middle school, high school, first grade, whatever it was, like, your your nervousness was can will i be connected am i going to create a friend when you start a new job your nervousness is will i be accepted so going back to connection we when you go somewhere new your nervousness is rejection so again connection you want acceptance right and so when we can connect to others about something that we love and we're passionate about and we can teach that and we can create this like amazing connection that's what life is truly about and it's giving it to others through that by teaching them um, that's why I truly loved. So one of the things I said, started saying yes to out of, I'm like, I'm going to try something that I love was rock climbing. I'm afraid of heights, like so, so afraid of heights. Right. Oh dear. Um, so I go up, oh, and you went, like, you went, literally down. You went skydiving. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cause I had to get, I, like, so my belief system is anything that I'm afraid of. It's a 100% yes to, because I don't want anything to have power over me. Like it just can't happen. And so, yeah, I went skydiving last year and it was like the best thing of my life. And I wasn't afraid. It was all just like made up in my mind. And it was beautiful. It was like so fun. But um, I went rock climbing and I just went to just to Momentum over here in Sandy, Utah. You guys are local. And I just went there one night. And this is like two years ago. And I was like, yeah, I want to rock climb. And the girl's like, okay, so like who's here to belay you? I'm like, I, I don't know what these words are that you're saying. I'm not, I've never done this. I don't know what you want from me. She's like, well, you have to have like a partner. Like someone has to like have the rope and tie you in and make sure you can get to the top and like release you. I'm like, cool, okay, so what's your name? And she's like, Rebecca. I'm like, cool, Rebecca, what time do you get off? Cause you're gonna belay me. And she's like, uh, actually I just, I get off in 20 minutes. I'm like, cool, I'll wait. And she's like, okay. And so she's like, all right, let's do this. So I made a friend and I'm like, I gotta let you know, like sister, I'm so afraid of heights. And she's like, okay, cool, like, let's do this. So I get up to the top, get down. But this whole time she's like talking me through it. She's mentoring me. She's teaching me. She's guiding me. And it was like this whole awesome connection. And it got me out of my fear. It got me out of my element. It created a whole new friendship. It created a whole new mentorship and this whole new culture. But it was all just like by having this form of connection. And then that connected me to all these different people, connected me to nature, to earth. Like it's all these different ways of connecting. And so I know I'm kind of circling around that, but my whole point to that is that we all crave connection. We all crave to be seen. And, that, and so when you can share like what you love, you're creating more and more connection with others and you're creating an environment where people feel safe enough to be vulnerable and allow themselves to be seen. And that's like the truest, deepest connection. And that's like in the best marriages, best relationships, the best friendships, like the reason they work is that you've created this, this psychological safe place and this goes to emotional intelligence where you're creating a place and this is like in coaching and leadership and friendship and whatever you want to put it in your if you can cultivate the connection where hey I, you are so safe to come here and say whatever you gotta say and be seen as whatever you need to be seen by and heard like i'm just here to listen to you and love you and accept you that's the deepest form of connection you can ever have and yep. what if we all learn how to do that and then we created that for everybody around us in the world could you imagine like how crazy beautiful this world could be? And guess what? Every single one of you listening, you all have that right now. You all have the opportunity to go out there and create that. And it's a domino effect. It's just like one little light shining and it's like the candle and it keeps lighting it all up. And like we can light up the world by just sharing connection and passion and love. And that's like what I'm all about. So yeah. well, let's talk about that because you know they say if you want to reach a goal, if you want to change a behavior, you write it down you track your progress and you tell someone. 
You're a coach. Yes. You've talked a lot about the importance of an accountability partner, someone else, the belayer person. Talk a little bit about the experience you've had as a coach in helping other people reach their joy level. Yeah, I love that. I think that's the beauty of it. I think you know that right on the spot is the accountability piece. And I think that so often people are afraid to say like, hey, I need accountability. They make it sound like it's weak in their mind that they need someone to help push them. But in fact, if that is you realizing how in order for you to be the strongest you, you need someone to help push you a little bit in this area. And there's nothing wrong with that. That does not make you weak. That makes you the strongest person in the room for you to say like, hey, ego check, I can't do this alone. And I'm willing to be vulnerable enough to ask someone, hey, could you help me? Because the word help, like we get so afraid to ask for that and the same with the accountability, but it's so needed and it's so vital. I have my own health coach. I have my own mindset coach. If I'm like, back in the day, I had my own finance coach. Anything that you want to get better at, go seek someone who's already doing it and who will teach you the pieces and will help hold you accountable to that. If you want to save $1,000 every single month, the first thing that you're going to do is go back and look at your bank account and to figure out, well, where's all my money going to and how can I change what I'm depositing so I can put it somewhere else? Well, same exact thing that I do is the self inventory is like, okay, well, if you want to love yourself and you want to bring joy, let's talk about all the promises you're not making to yourself. Let's do an inventory on that and let's start depositing some trust into you by you keeping a promise to yourself because that deposit will have an instant return. You're going to feel so proud of yourself, so gratitude, all the feelings. You're going to love yourself in an instant. And it's actually a dopamine rush. Your brain actually releases dopamine and says, you did it. Like, let's keep going. Let's keep having this rush happen. How, what can we do to create more of this? And your right. heart actually grows. It's like the bridge. Like, it's like, oh my gosh, this made me feel so good. Like, I want more of it. And you actually start to smile more. Your, your shoulders are going to release. Your tension in your jaw is going to release. You don't even realize you're holding on, on to all of this until you start to do, do some self analyzation and ask yourself that. So the first thing that I do is I love that you said write it because I'm like, okay, if you write it, you can invite it. You can also write it to release it. So if you're having a hard time releasing a bad thought that may come up for you, and I'll give you guys an example of this, is like, oh, I'm just not enough. Like I have this goal. I want to be able to own my own company or I want to get married or, you know, I want to save $100,000. I want to lose 15 pounds, whatever it may be for you. Like, okay, perfect. Let's write that and invite it. Now, Let's figure out like why you haven't been able to reach this goal before. What obstacles have come into place for you before that's made you not keep your promise to yourself, which that's a negative, that's a, that's a withdrawal from your trust account, right? I want you to deposit into your trust account. And so they're like, okay, well, every time I say I'm going to start a diet, then right away, I'm like, no, you can't do it. You're just not enough. And then I go to work and then my boss brings in donuts. And so I have to eat donuts because if I don't, then I'm rude because they're a free donut. I'm like, okay. so. What I just heard from you is you're so worried about what other people think about you and you want to please others that you're willing to, to just give them your whole trust account and say, no, the donut's worth my trust in myself. Is that, is that how you want to keep living? And then they're like, oh, no, no. Oh, that's not what I said, <laughs> right? I'm like, but it is. And that's what you continue to do. And so my job as a coach, you've given me permission to hold up the accountability mirror to you and say, mm-mm. -mm. Like, let's get honest with yourself. And that's my first rule is like, you got to get real. Because if you can't get real, you're never going to be able to deal. You're never going to be able to feel and you're never going to be able to heal. So the more real you can get with yourself, then you can identify like where your weak point really is. And then you can have the accountability there. And most often I find it's just believing in ourselves and it's finding out what you can do to deposit that trust into yourself. And so I'll, I'll take that back and start with a small promise. Like, okay, this week, I want you to every day when you wake up, make your bed. I want you to do that first thing in the morning, because if you can create a win first thing in the morning, you just told yourself, I can, I will, I must. And you create that dopamine rush the rest of the day, your brain is going to find a puzzle piece to help you get that dopamine rush every single day. The way our brain works, it can't, it can't work with an unoperated, it can't work with an unanswered question in your head. So if you ask yourself, like, how else can I fill this the rest of the day? It will literally go find you puzzle pieces to make you feel that. So it's going to bring you ways to keep promises to yourself all day long. And then at the end of the day, I want you to ask yourself, like, how do I keep promises to myself by me making my bed in the day, in the first thing when I woke up in the morning? Because if you win the morning, you win the day. And then you're able to identify, like, all these different ways that that showed up for you without even re recognizing it. And then you're able to domino affect that and keep doing that. And then you can really build into that trust account for yourself. So that's, like, step one of what I do with my cl coaching clients is 
really asking them, well, what has been stopping you and how can we change that? It's just a, a mental shift. And then re realizing how to make your brain work for you rather than work against you. So you've mentioned the comparison that we so naturally do of ourselves and others and the worry we have about what other people think of us. Talk about how common mm -hmm. that is as one of the barriers that people have. Oh, the number one thing is, we're like, we literally just are in this compare zone. And, I'm, and you've heard this quote before, but comparison is the thief of joy. And it truly is. And I think that that's even more relevant today than ever because of social media. And I think social media is the most beautiful thing. It's my platform that I utilize to gain clients to, to broadcast, but I've learned how to utilize it in a way that makes me not compare me. And if I ever jump on and I see someone or watch something where I instantly start to be mean to myself and talk negative to myself. So what that may look like is like, oh, your body's not good enough. You should look like this or, oh, like you, your house should be this way. You should decorate more like this. You should dress more like this. That is not positive for me. That's not putting a trust deposit into my mind. And like my mind is the most beautiful garden. I'm not planting any weeds in there. So the second that that pulls up, I'm like, oh, okay, self-check. Nope. What's really going on here? What, what really just triggered me right now? Like, why am I really comparing myself? And so then I, I do an inventory check on myself. Like, what's really going on here? Am I feeling mad at myself that maybe I haven't stuck to my word as much as I want to? Am I like comparing myself because I, I want that, but I'm too afraid to say that I do want to have that? Or am I not willing enough to go work for that? Like, oh, that girl has killer abs, but am I willing to do what she's willing for it? I don't know. So maybe I shouldn't compare myself for that, right? And then it's also realizing that like, that's my job and my way to understand if I want to feel that way. And so any of you listening, if you pull up social media and you're instant and in compare zone, or you go around people that make you start just to compare yourself, like you're allowed to social cleanse at any point in time that you want. And so, and that can even be some of your family sometimes where you're like, you go around them and you're just like instantly comparing yourself. You're like, Oh, well, by the time I'm 35, I should have had seven kids and I, I should have already been the president of a company. I should have 27 minivans and all these vacation pictures. And it's like, no, <laughs> quit shooting all over yourself. You, There's no should you have to live by but your own. And so one lesson that I teach here is the gift of complimenting versus compare. And I love to teach it to you guys is that for me, I compared my body so much and put myself worth so much in that I compared what my marriage should have looked like. I compared even like what my kids and me should look like in our family pictures. Like we better all be smiling and like in khakis and happy in the mountains, like, you know, and like but really if you've done family pictures, like it's terrible. You have to bring 27 fruit snacks. Your kids are all over the place. You're like, for the love of God, will you please just smile? And like, it's terrible. So instead like capture those moments, like let's be real, right? And so every client I work with struggles with compare and it's one of the deepest parts of compare and it, it shows up as rejection. It shows up with them comparing themselves to themselves. Like you could be comparing yourself to a last season of yourself and that's no longer who you are. And so instead it's learning how to truly compliment and receive love for who you are today and receive that. And so what I tell this, and so I'll, I can, I'll kind of go back to a story that I tell often is my ab story. So, um, this is a year and a half ago, I was competing for my first show and I had been doing like two hours of cardio a day, just like destroying myself. Like it was so hard. And I go to this gym and this girl just has like the most amazing abs of all time, like the most amazing body. And I start just to compare myself. And I'm like, I bet this girl's never had kids. I bet she didn't have to lose a hundred pounds and keep in mind. So I used to be 220 pounds at this point. I'm 120 pounds. I've lost a hundred pounds for this. And, um, and so in my head, I'm comparing myself, right? And, and I'm also putting her down in the process because I'm saying that I wish I had that and I'm not worth that. So I'm going to make her smaller and uglier to me to make me feel better. So I, I'm going through this all internal dialogue. And then I realize I'm like, Stephanie, that is not who you are. Like, sister, stop it. That is not what you teach. That's not what you practice. And that's not what you believe. Go stop it. So I immediately take off my headset. And at this point, this girl's over on the stairs and she's like running the stairs. And I go over to her, I look like a freak. And I'm like, hi. And she's like, hi. And like pulls out her earbud. And I'm like, hey, I just got to tell you, like I was over there and I was looking at your body and I was actually comparing myself to, and I just want to honor you. And I want to say like, whatever you're doing is working. You look amazing. You look killer. Like you're just, you're doing awesome. Would you mind teaching me some of the things that have really helped you? So number one is compliment like from a genuine place of intention. Like I want to celebrate you. Like I see you, I honor you. I want to celebrate you. And then number two is ask. Like, and Brene Brown says this, that you can't hate close up, 
And when you get really close up to someone, you start to ask, you learn empathy, you learn compassion, you learn grace, you learn love, and you become teachable. So I start to ask her and she's like, oh, well, actually I lost 90 pounds and I have three kids. And so like, you have no idea what that means to me. <laughs> humble pie, like, are you kidding me? Humble pie. And so I just sit there and I'm like, oh, <laughs> And she's like, what? I'm like, girl, I was sitting over there like, there's no way this girl's ever had to lose weight. She never had kids. And I'm like, so again, you can't hate close up, right? And she's like, oh my gosh, like you have no idea. So, that, so now we're on the stairs, just like talking and running and like becoming best friends. I'm like, well, what did you do? Like, well, what, how does this help you? Blah, blah, blah. And, and so instantly it changed my whole mood. I become from a place of gratitude. My heart is full. I absolutely love this woman now. Now I'm learning all these new facts, become a best friend to her. And like, we now we have kids and like all this, and like we bond, right? So yes. my, my lesson and my gift to you in this is when you're comparing yourself to someone else, it's really just you, you're mad at yourself and you're wishing you had something. So instead go celebrate that person, go honor that person from the most genuine place that you possibly can. And like, be honest about it. Cause people can tell on your face and you're like, Oh, I like your shirt. That's really cute. Like yeah. you're like, <laughs> like, I want you to be so genuine and like shift in that. And gratitude is the quickest way to change your attitude. So if you can shift into that and you're like, Oh, okay. Like I want to go celebrate you. And I teach women how to celebrate women because women compare women to women constantly. And then it creates this internal judgment and hate and just like all this stuff that doesn't have to happen. So instead celebrate your sister, look at her, honor her. Don't be inferior to that. And then ask and learn from her. I've never met one person in my life where I was like, Hey, you're the boss of this. Would you teach me that? No one's ever told me no. They're like, oh, really? You think, okay, yeah, well, this is what I do. I'm like, cool, thank you. Like the world is there to teach and to share. So be a student. And that's my whole philosophy with to let go of compare. So I'd love for y'all to try that out. So instead of compare, compliment and see what happens. The other thing you said, Stephanie, was make small steps. Talk a little bit about mm -hmm. as you coach people, how important is it that people not try to eat the whole elephant in one bite? Oh my gosh, so important. And that is the number one reason people can't achieve goals is they're like, well, my success measurement is only once I reach 50 pounds, then, I, then I'll say I'm successful. My success measurement is only once I'm married, then I'll say I, I, I'm successful. My successful measurement is only once I've saved $100,000. And so it's like, okay, well, what are the baby steps that are gonna get you there? And what is it, what's the actual win? So my practice with this is I want you to find a win every day. And there's always a win every day. So that when could be today, I woke up and I made my bed. Today, I woke up and I stuck to my diet. Today, I woke up and I wrote down my five things that I'm thankful for. Today, I, I taught someone something. Today, I made a connection with some, someone. So it's like helping you train your thoughts and your brain to find wins in everything that you do, not just in the big grand scheme of things, because that's like hiking and you get to the very top and you're like, oh, that's, it was pretty. Okay, let's go back down. Like, did you enjoy every step of the way going up there? Were you even looking up or were you just constantly looking down? And were you just like, oh, when, how much longer? So this is 2.2 miles. Oh, so we're at 1.7. Okay. Like I want you to enjoy the process step by step because every step you're doing, you're growing a muscle within you. You're growing belief in you, commitment. You're seeing that you can stick to hard things. That's the win. And, and if you don't know how to find a win every day, when you actually get to what your win is, you won't know how to celebrate. You won't know how to honor it. You won't know how to be excited about it. You're just going to go chase the next big thing. And you got to learn how to sit in that win just as much as you have to learn how to sit in pain. So like we have to find that you can sit in that emotion and learn how to practice that and embody that. So when you get it, you're like, this is the win. And it's finding the win every step of the way. How do you teach people that? Because that's such an incredibly important element to enjoy the process and not just mm -hmm. the end result. How, how do you teach people to really be in the moment, to experience you know, the oh, state man. of mind of being in the moment? I think it's the hardest thing to do, um, but it's about it's finding, just being present, right? So like right now, I'm just here present with you and I love this and I'm engaged and I'm, I'm in this moment and this is the win, right? But we live in a world where you're getting distracted every seven seconds. So whether that be a text is coming through, something on your social media, you're a new, whatever, an upgrade on your phone, like you're constantly getting distracted. If, even if you're out and about, you have cars driving around you, your kids are yelling at you, there's constant distractions. But that's never going to go away. So what you can learn is how can I check into me and find how to be present right now? And that's by setting an intention. Like, what's your intention today? What do you want to do? So again, if you do that, if you ask yourself, what's my intention? 
Well, my intention is to be present and to be patient and to be in this moment, you no, know, regardless. I want to find that all day and all that I do. So again, your brain is your brain works for you. Your brain will go find every puzzle piece to help you make that happen for you and to check into that. And the second that you stop being present, I want you to ask yourself, like, where did I really go? And why did I go there? And most often it's because an emotion or something comes up for you that you don't want to sit in or be in. And so you distract yourself. And we're just so used to constantly being distracted as a form to survive rather than learning how to thrive. But the only way to learn how to thrive is to sit and be present in that moment and to truly anchor into that and like step into that. And so that's like through breathing techniques, through meditation, through anchoring systems. Um, so like I anchor, I help teach my clients how to anchor like feelings that they want. So like if they were like, oh my God, I had the best time with my kids today. I'm like, okay, well, why? Well, tell me about it. Like I put my phone down and we just put on music and like we just danced and it was only for like two minutes, but like literally it was like so joyful and I just loved it. I'm like, so tell me what you think the key component was there that made you feel like so alive. And they're like, I mean, I don't know. Like, it was just me and my kids. I'm like, okay, so what I heard from you is that you checked out of everything else and you checked into your kids and you were just there and you were present, even if it was for two minutes. That made you feel like the best mom of the day, right? And they're like, yeah, like I was really with my kids. Like I really loved on them. And like we shared this moment and this memory. So you connected, you created a memory, you found your joy juice and you were present all in one for just two minutes and that changed your whole day. And that's a, that's a joy moment for you. That was a win for you. Sister, all you did was you stepped into being present with you. And so it's just helping them recognize that and being like, oh, oh, okay, cool. And the more and more you do it, the more you can do it. And then when you start to realize you're getting distracted, ask yourself like, why am I not wanting to stay here? What's really going on for me? And check back into that. And that's when I use the anchoring system is that I can anchor that feeling of like that presence with my kids dancing and that joy. And I'm like, oh my God, I want to feel more of that. So I'm going to snap my fingers so I can hold on to this memory and this thought and anchor this. If you have a ring or a watch, you can hold it onto that. Or you can just do this and just bring it into you. And the second that you start to go somewhere else and you start to distract yourself, just remember all that is right in here. So snap back into it and snap yourself back into the present. Because we have three ways of thinking, either in the past, and the past is full of anxiety because you can't do anything about that, or you're or you're too much into the future, and that's bringing anxiety and like anxiousness and nervousness because you don't know what you can control because you're not guaranteed the future. You're only guaranteed right now, this second, today. Right. And so when you're in the present, you're actually present, and that's why it's called the present. Is it's the best present you can ever have if you can choose to stay in it? I love that. So, nice. So we have a we have an attendee who has okay. raised. His hand. I'm going to turn on his mic. Bill, say something. See if we can hear you. Can you hear me now? I can. Yeah, go ahead. Hi, Stephanie. I'm enjoying your hey. uh, your uh, message, your core message. It's uh, you're you're a passionate young woman. I've got four daughters of my own, so I'm sort of watching you and going, "Wow, you know, I'm certain I'm old enough to be your dad." Um, and I and I, <laughs> but I'm watching it. It. it my question is. You know, uh, with those four, I, it's a little bit selfish, but also broad. With those four daughters and six granddaughters that I have, and mm -hmm. you know, I coached girls fast pitch softball for many years, and I've been around a lot of you know motivating girls, motivating young women. Uh, you go, girl. Let's try to do the right thing. Help you go forward, right? And I hear a lot yeah. of that in your message. I hear that it's not just limited to girls, but my my question is twofold. One as a dad and a grandpa in today's world um, with lots of interesting things happening in our in our life and our society today and and all of my girls are mothers they're all married they're all you know so they're in a, they're in that space of their life um, yeah. what what can dad what can grandpa do um, from your perspective and so those are kind of two questions that are probably very similar but the third one is, that Daryl and I in the in the in the work we're in in working in healthcare, there's lots of youths, there's lots of young women, there's lots of young moms, there's lots of single moms, there's lots of uh, overwhelmed moms, there's lots of things we we deal with um, in our in our world in healthcare, the women because they're very natural nurturers um, a little bit more so than men are also very conscious of the healthcare needs. And, and while I understand mm -hmm. your core message is one of, hey, just, you know, 
make change the script, change the program so that there's maybe the, the consequential reality is is that healthcare is a, is affected by that. Certainly we understand that. But we do we we do live in a space that has got a lot of interesting questions. And I, I would just love your thoughts on these things. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. So just to kind of recap where what you could do as a grandpa and as a father to help yep. harvest and like cultivate within your daughters and your granddaughters just like this love and like that they can be who they are and like be authentic to them. Is that correct? That's the first one. Yep. Okay. And then the second one is how does that apply like in business with moms? Yeah. How, do we, moms how do we make, okay. Yeah. How do we make that bigger? How do we how do we affect the moms and the and the the the, the young women out there that are making important decisions going into their healthcare in the future? I love that. Well, first, I want to totally honor you for being on here and for being in this moment on a Monday morning. I think that's so amazing. So I celebrate that. And also for joining in and asking a question like, yes, I love all the questions. So thank you for that. I know that that can be scary sometimes just to jump on and ask the question. So thank you. So I would love to answer your first part of that. And I want to also honor you that you are asking yourself, like, how can I show up for my daughters and for my granddaughters in a way that's so loving and that I can help cultivate this, right? I think that's so powerful and for me my answer with that is just to create that safe psychological space where they can come and talk to you about anything and then also like talk to them like hey how are you really doing like what's really going on and you're always going to hear oh i'm fine anybody that says i'm fine is so not fine so keep asking it takes about seven questions for them to actually tell you what's really going on and so be a little bit of a detective and start to ask it in different ways over and over and over again and that's the best the best leaders the best coaches the best people that you want to be around that help inspire you is just because they asked a question that sparked you to be honest with you so just start to do that and start to get to truly know them from a place of non-judgment because so often we're we're so we're still trapped in this this parent and daughter dialogue of like I still want to uh, to have your approval as a dad or as a grandpa or whatever that may look like and so we might still play small in the role that we identify with that you think we need to show up as in order to gain your love your support your wisdom whatever that may look like and so breaking that barrier and being like hey like you know what I love about you and what I see in you and it's powerful to say what I see in you because when you do that what that tells your brain is someone sees this beautiful trait and this beautiful quality in you so if they can see it in you you are able to see it in you and the problem with that is that the barrier is allowing me to see that in me but the more and more you help people see that in them the more they can see that in themselves too and you help them practice it so like if you're like you know what I love about you is you know what Jane every time you come over for family dinner you always come over like with a game and like you always have a way for all of us to connect together and like what that does for me is it it helps me create memories with my kids and my grandkids it helps me bond to you it helps me like just have this moment where I just know every time you come over like you're already going to have something prepared and like that is such an amazing quality do you even know what that does for me what I see how that could do for you do you see that in you and recognize that because so often we don't tell people what we truly value and see in them and love them and appreciate them. We just think they know. We're like, well, they're just good at it. They should just know that. Um, there's this awesome TED Talks on it. It's called The Lollipop Method by Drew Dudley. He's an amazing researcher and psychologist and his books are also so amazing. And I practice this method where he helps people see the lollipop method in someone else and then go give that lollipop to them so they can pass that on. And it's just finding that and like helping them see them and then helping them practice that and then embody that. Be like, and everybody else around them, like, don't you love that Jane does that? Like, help celebrate that and acknowledge that. So, and she might get awkward and weird about it and be like, I don't know. So, the other part of that is helping them learn how to receive that. Be like, just take it all in, like, love on that. They're all seeing that in you. So, help harvest this, this energy and this loving abundance where people can receive it. Because part of love is not just giving, but it's learning how to receive. And women have a very hard time learning how to receive love. An example of this is you could compliment them and be like, oh, you look really pretty today. It's a, new, it's a new outfit. And they get all awkward about it, right? Or, oh, your hair looks really good. Like, oh, I just washed it. They just dismissed every compliment you just gave them. So it's helping them learn how to receive that and stop and be like, no, take that in. And so what I do with that is I, I help people learn how to receive a compliment. I say, say, hold that to your heart. Someone just gave you a gift. Like, bless you. Thank you. If you can see that in me, I can see that in me. And I'll have my women, like, I'll write down, like, what did people tell you they saw in you this week? Now, how can you learn how to see that in you? 
and that's even in the leadership that goes that ties into your second part of your question but this is so often why women won't show up in companies they're in work and like they have all these great ideas and they are natural nurturers and they're really good at, at bringing community that's why like women prisons are the best because they're naturally bringing community within them and so like it just helps like they run really smoothly women are really great at creating interconnection and, and like that's why anybody who's like married like your 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 wife sets up all your family events your barbecues all the dinner parties they bring natural connection so help cultivate a culture that bring women to shine as they already are like who they truly are and help them cultivate that and get them bought into that help them be seen for who they are and help them practice seeing other women so it's not a compared game where they feel like they can't show up fully but instead like let's work together to create that connection and celebrate one another and so you could do things like hey i want you to give someone a thank you card this week for five things that they did really well and it's like, and anybody like help, help everybody do that. But you're creating this culture where they learn how to speak up more and they learn how to value themselves more and see themselves more. And that just helps with abundance and self-love and create all of that, if that makes sense. No, it's awesome. Right. Stephanie. Hopefully that answers your question. You, yes. That, that was great. Thank you. I have a yeah. question real quickly. You, you talked about the need to record, to track, talk a little bit about journaling and and recording and trying to look back and say, what did I do and how was I successful? What's the importance of that piece of tracking and journaling and, and just thinking about what you accomplished? Yeah, absolutely. Journaling is the number one thing. So I have all my clients journal every single day and it becomes a practice for them. A, it helps you be truthful with yourself. Most often we're so afraid of rejection that we won't even talk to people about what we're really going through or feeling. And so if you can't even be honest with yourself, how are you ever gonna be honest with someone else? So if you can learn how to at least like write out what you're feeling, then you'll be able to tap more into what your actual emotions are and what you want to express and how to express yourself. Um, and then also just getting in the habit of writing out and asking yourself questions. Like, how, what was my win today? Like, what, how did I actually feel today? What brought me gratitude today? Who am I thankful for today? What lesson did I learn? What did I teach today? But doing this like natural inventory check of yourself, it helps you show up better the next day because you're like, I want to have like all these answers and so you actually kind of gamify it that's how your brain actually starts to work and process it and it's a, it's beautiful if you're a competitive person because you get to utilize that strength in you automatically rather than being like in an egotistical place you're like i want to do more like i want to i want to write down all the things tomorrow and so it just helps you like gamify that but it helps you also to just get your brain to release and like decompress because we have so many open files constantly that that's why you have a hard time being present. That's why you have a hard time letting go of stress is that think about your phone, your phone runs slower when you have all these open files open in the back, right? And so then when you swipe up and you delete all these files and all of a sudden your phone works better. That's literally how your mind works. So release some of the files that are open every day by closing out the chapters, by writing them down and like literally closing a book and like forming it and being like, that's all done now what now what can i take care of now and just what you do that you're forming your brain to work for you you're analyzing with yourself and then you have your own personal kpis essentially because you're asking yourself core questions every day and then that's like your metric system of your your own success where it doesn't have to be the 50 pounds or the hundred thousand dollars in your bank account but like did i do all these small little daily habits because how you do one thing is how you do all things. So if you give yourself like five core questions and every day you're journaling and asking yourself about that, that will help you create like the core of who you wanna be. And that's the foundation of your mindset of everything else. And that starts with journaling that out and doing your own self-assessment. And then later on, later on, you can add more metrics that you want for your success. And I call those like your own personal KPIs. So like your key performance indicators, like what's gonna help you perform in the key way that you want that indicates that you love you. Because when you do that, that's gonna help you show up as the best you. And it just becomes this, your own internal dialogue for you rather than like comparing yourself and living in this other, other realm, so to say. So Stephanie, I gotta ask you, what, did you learn as a VP of finance that's been so helpful to you in running Powerhouse? What are some of the things that you were able to bring from that experience of 10 years into what you're doing now? Um, being able to ask hard questions because running part of a company is, yeah, you have to be really good at listening. So when, I, when I'm putting out fires with employees, it wasn't really the actual fire they came in with. It was a total different way that the fire started. So it's really like listening to that person and being like, 
okay, so what you're really upset with is this, like, and then asking questions to understand that and to validate that and to hear that. Um, so asking key questions and then also being willing to be really coachable and really adaptable. When you're running a company, like the only thing that's constant is change. Every You could go have a meeting and be like, okay, guys, now we're going to do it. We have a new CRM and we're going to start working things this way and blah, blah, blah. And then two hours later, be like, actually scratch that. Everybody go back to the old way. There was a, there was a failed test we didn't see. Sorry, my bad. And like, you got everybody so bought in. They're like, yeah, I knew this is going to be so awesome. And then two hours later, you're like, let's have another meeting. And let's actually go back to what we were doing before. And then the next day you have to go get them all pumped on this, on the new thing again. And so adaptability is like your best friend. So for me, just learning how to be super adaptable really quickly and to not be like so planted into one idea, but realize that that idea might be like the baby step of the idea, but what, what's really going to actually come and like make all this harvest happen is going to be so many different things. And that was from me, like, running so many different campaigns and different ideas and launching new things. And like, we could, we could test something for six months and never do anything with it. And so it was realizing that all of those pieces just really helped me formalize and understand what truly mattered and helped me identify like what the end goal really was and how to always start with the end in mind. Because if you do, then you're working backwards and then you can always create what you want to create and being able to adapt to that. And I would say the next piece of that is really learning how to delegate, like, you cannot do anything all alone. And anybody who says that, like that you must be having a really tough time right now because like that is so not true. So learn how to delegate and through that, learn how to teach. And it's like the one plus role. Like even if they may only do it at a nine and you perform at a 10, you can get them to a 10 by just teaching that person and helping them and loving on them and helping them shine more. They soon they can do it plus one better than you can. And that's what your goal as a leader should be is like, Everybody around you should eventually be better than you are. And so when you can delegate and you can teach them that, that's been the beauty of this for me. And through that, I've been able to find, I, I have an assistant that works for me for free for 25 hours a week, just by me teaching her the plus one rule, because she just wants to try to always get better. And it's just, that is like, yeah, I'm like, hey, here's all these assignments. Here's this. I need your help with this. And she's like, okay, I get to learn this. Like, that's literally what her mindset is. But it's being able to cultivate a culture where you can create that safety where people will literally work for free for you because they understand the value that you give them. And then, and you value what they do for you. And you realize it's all a team. It's not just one person. And if you can get people bought into what your vision is and they see the end goal in mind and they see what pillar they are in that end goal, they will go all the way home for you. Nice. So we have a question that came in. Going back okay. to the journaling question, is it important yeah. to share your journal with others? Why or why not? Oh, I love that question. Sorry, just going to plug in right here. Um, so that's up to you, I think. So there's a couple different things I think about this. Like I said, there, I have two of the things about journaling. Write it to invite it and then write it to release it. So if you're really struggling, maybe you're really struggling comparing yourself or struggling like comparing what you think you should do, or you have a really hard time with someone in your family or a relationship at work, or you're just struggling, write all that out to like release it. But if you, if the, if the back of your mind, you're like, someone else is going to read this, you're not going to be fully honest with yourself. And you will actually be comparing yourself because you're like, what would that person think if they were writing it? Like, maybe I should form it this way instead. Like, is my grammar right? don't like no like this is for you to release it like full on release it we hold on to negative energy negative tension negative all that within us and so if you can let go of that by literally like bringing it to the surface and then writing it out and this is even happens when people try to speak their truth and they'll, they'll talk about what they really want to say and you may hear them get like choked up in their voice so like, oh, oh, like and they're trying to form the words like they've suppressed their truth for so long they literally can't even get it out and that may be the same thing for you when you're writing it so i, I would say if you feel like you need to write it first, write a release letter. So you actually like release all that you want to let go of. And then you could go and like write what you actually want to share. And that will help you actually articulate like what was your true intention that, of why you wanted to share? Are you sharing this because you want someone to feel bad for you or feel sorry for you? Are you sharing this because you want them to see you? Are you sharing this because you want to connect to them? Are you sharing this so you can be heard and you don't feel like that's the only way that you can be heard? Like ask yourself, like what's your intention behind sharing it? And then you have to be okay with whatever that person's answer is. Because if, if your goal is that then they're going to write you this 10 page love letter, but that's not the way that they process or think, your intention isn't going to work for you and your expectation is just going to fail you. So you have to be okay with when you give that letter, whatever happens, happens. And if you're not in a place where you can do that, 
don't do that. Then the second part is like, if you want to, if you want to just write it down for you, I would say write it for you. I have like 27 journals all throughout my house. I have one in my car. My kids have each have one on their backpack because like, it's just our practice. Like, or if I have like a good idea or a good thought or a good quote, I'm like, oh, I just got so creative. I have to write this down. If I'm like hiking, like nature brings creativity to me. So I'll, I'll utilize that to write it, to invite it. So like, think about that too, of what you what you want to have more in your life, like journalize, journal that and write that and express yourself. But I would say, as far as to, like, if you want to share that with someone, share it, but like ask yourself what your intention is with that. And then make sure there's no expectation wrapped up in sharing that, if that makes yeah. sense. So Stephanie, we're getting close to the end of the hour and I'd love to give you a chance okay. to, if there's a comment a thought an idea that we haven't addressed that you'd love to share please do that and then will you also share with us how do you get in touch with you if, if people who are listening want to connect with you how's the best way to reach you yeah i love that thank you um so i would say the last thing i would say as a comment is just that really ask yourself like what is it that you need to accept about yourself to love yourself and this goes back to like the compare mode the everything like not allowing yourself to be present because you're if you're always thinking like oh i have to have this in order for me to love myself like what's your self-worth so wrapped up in and that could be in anything that could be in your job it could be in your bank account in your relationship and the clothes that you wear and the car that you drive whatever that may be but start to break that down and ask yourself like why do i feel like that's where my self-love is at why do i feel like that's where my self-trust account is and like how can you break that down and then how can you build up self-love and self-confidence in you by learning how to trust you? So like, what's a promise that you're willing to make to yourself? And I use the word commitment because that's a powerful word. And so many people are afraid of a commitment. Like think about if Vivit comes to your house and they're like, well, yeah, we'll, we'll give you security, but it's a three-year commitment. People are like, oh, never mind. No, no, <laughs> never mind. Oh, you want a new phone? Yeah, it's a two-year commitment. People are so afraid of that word. That commitment word is like, and if you're in the dating scene, commitment is like a swear word. They're like, oh, I'm sorry, what? You're dying of cancer, is that what I just heard? Um, so instead, like, I want you to learn how to be committed to yourself. Start using powerful words for you because what that's gonna do is help you elevate you and elevate the world that you expect. And so when you raise your standards, you raise you raise everything else around you. So start using powerful words. Like I choose to commit to me, to love me by keeping this commitment and whatever that, that may look like for you and keep that commitment to you. Like let the let your adrenaline go for you. Let your endorphins release. Let that serotonin come down for you and learn how to be that commit, commitment to yourself and your body will do that for you too. Um, second thing, how to find me. My Instagram is Steph Iliff. It's S-T-E-F-I-L-I-F-F. -F. That's where I put out the most of my information at. Um, you can also go on my website. It's coachingwithsteph.com. And I have a free affirmation download, a free journal download that you can get on there, a free like um, goal setting download. And you can also take my self-love uh, inventory quiz on there for free if you want. And you can reach out to me on there. Um, I have my podcast, Just Talking. So you're more than welcome to go listen to that on iTunes or Spotify. And I have different guests on all the time. And we just talk about all the things, all the ways. So I'd love for y'all to connect in any way. Oh. Uh, you said your website is coaching with steps so spell step yeah so it's coaching with steph s-t-e-f dot -E com my name is spelled right. super weird i'm from utah if you're from utah you know that everybody felt like they had to be like super special and make your name really authentic so <laughs> that's what it is yeah awesome thank you so much this has been delightful yes that you've been great in thank conclusion you. i'd like to um just simply let you everyone know that this Wednesday, our guest panelists will be Dr. Michael Open, Weber State University Professor of Health Promotion and Director of the WSU Stress Relief Center. Uh, following this huddle, you'll receive a, a, a survey. Please give us your thoughts, share um, your feedback. It helps us improve. And also, we'd love to hear any thoughts from you regarding future huddle themes. If you've got a guest panelist you'd like to recommend, we'd love to hear about that. And you can reach us and contact us through the goingonoffense.com website using the contact us form. We want to thank today's participants and especially Stephanie. This has been fantastic. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. It's been so much fun. It's been the best way to start my morning. So thank you. Great. Well, and um, we want to thank the organizations that have gotten behind this movement. Uh, they're on our website. A number of them have offered wonderful free or discounted services under the 
help page or the resources or ideas or suggestions. So check those out. We will be posting this video later today. And we're going to sign off now and say goodbye, remind everyone that we do these every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And we wish you the very best. Thanks again, Steph. Thank you.